Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Stoneblock 2. I did a little bit of work on our canola oil factory, so let's check it out. What I decided to do is to reduce the amount of canola that we're producing with garden cloches. So we just have three now. I think that is going to be plenty for what we need because we're not making that much refined canola oil, uh, or sorry, regular canola oil that we need to have as many cloches as we had. And I can also just move the cloches maybe to here to the side. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll move them a tiny bit closer, but I'm trying to keep like a three... Uh, scaffolding gap in between stations kind of uh, so we have this guy which has a three gap then this has a three gap even though the fractionating still is now in here in between uh, and we're uh, currently not turning any canola oil into refined canola oil because we're just waiting for this drum to be empty so we're gonna use up the eight million buckets that is in there uh, and after that we're gonna start actually using canola oil so over here, uh, I made a few changes. So everything is kind of like more connected. Uh, what I really dislike is that these have a fixed input slot because I would really like the cable. Would really love if they're, um, if the input slots could be configurable, like I could right click with the hammer uh, and change them up, but it is what it is. We're gonna deal with it the way we deal with it. So uh, over here, we extract canola, it goes into there canola oil goes into there, gets processed into refined canola oil, refined canola oil ends up here, and then over here we take the seed, we crystallize it, and it ends up here. So both of the, those two lines get connected, which is really nice, and I like it very, very much. So over here, I did a few changes to the redstone. It looks like this right now, and what it's basically doing is this guy is detecting uh, refined, sorry, crystallized oil, and if there is some, the torch is going to turn off, so this guy can pick it up. And if the refined, if the crystallized oil is not there, the torch will be on, this guy won't do anything. So basically, as soon as we have refined canola oil, which is the gray stuff, gray stuff, brown stuff, we don't pick it up at any point in time with this guy. So we can't get uh, refined oil on both ends, basically, is what I wanted to do. And when we have empowered oil here, and this is just sitting idle, idle as it is right now, because we're not using any, uh, it's going to restart again as soon as we use up some. And I can demonstrate this by taking some fluid ducts and putting them here, and then adding a servo. So we drain a little bit, and you can see that it turns on again, and it starts working, basically. Really cool. So this guy is taking a pulse every time we get regular canola oil, and it tosses it over here, the crystallized seed goes in, and we get crystallized canola oil, which is lovely. So now the next step is to take these seeds and these seeds and combine them in an empowerer to get empowered canola seeds, which I'm probably going to do by putting the empowerer, let's say if we do some scaffolding and get the whole 3x3 three three shebang that I'm kind of go in for, which would be possibly something like this and like that. And we can put some other block in between here, maybe the other scaffolding, even though we don't have any cabling going here. I mean, we could just connect it the way we have it, kind of. Uh, and also here. And we need the empowerer to be basically Let's demonstrate it like this. This would be the empowerer. Then we would need this much space around it like so. So we need that much space for it. And I can probably find the center kind of. We can possibly take this area that we have kind of in the center here. I might actually measure it out or how much of how much space we need if I can fit it in here. Uh, because here I would want to take the empowered oil, sorry, the, oh, hey, is on, I didn't say hi. Hi, sorry, recording. Um, basically, I say basically a lot, somebody mentioned, but apparently he can't live without it, so that's really cool. Uh, so we're going to take this, uh, I keep messing up the names, this is crystallized oil. Uh, so we're going to take the crystallized oil and then we're going to do another thingy with the droppers. So if we set that up here, we can do the empowering here. 
and then from the empower take it over to here where we would have the dropper on this side here we would have the oil coming in and then we can take the oil out somewhere else we can have the dropper here possibly so I think I have all the things ready so let's uh, let's just try and imitate this uh, so I'm gonna take the scaffolding do I have any more of the other scaffolding I do so we're gonna take that and then the regular scaffolding is gonna come out here this is gonna go like this and then that 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 like so and let's get some some torches in here just so we have lighting on everything so we would have the things that we need fluid collector fluid placer and there's a dropper somewhere dropper okay so if we have the fluid placer this guy's going to start placing as soon as i put it down so we need it to be here i think yeah so placer and then collector could be if it's here we can put the things here or the tank there and then we don't have enough space i don't think in between here i mean it's going to be a bit crammed because we can do that 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 actually this is where it would come up no and this would have to be one block more back and this one as well yeah, yeah it's not going to fit in this small gap we could though put it under the floor that might be a thing and then we keep everything the same if you're picking up what i'm putting down so we have this here we would take the regular scaffolding here and then on this spot is where we would have the other tank so that would be like this right and then over here we can grab it out and set up our dynamos and that would be where the power comes out of and we can put the empower in the middle slot here because it's going to fit under the floor we can take this scaffolding out replace it with some sort of glass or something and put the empower in the floor we can extract from the there from the bottom there from the bottom bring it together and get everything working i think that's going to be looking really good and i like that idea so let me get some glass or some other stuff we can probably just leave a, a hole in the middle kind of maybe take the scaffolding like this and then just leave this this hole just so you can see it barely and that should be fine so i'm gonna have to go make the empower which isn't that difficult uh, we have everything uh, at the base i just need to take some quartz and convert it and make some iron casings make some batteries so that's going to take me a moment i'm going to make it we're going to come over here and set it up i have made the empower and it's pretty much set up all but the power because i don't know how exactly i should get power in there i think i'm gonna go and extract it directly from the dynamos and go directly into the empower i think that will be fine i've kind of am using these posts to transfer power around the base here so we can put a post here uh i think i have one more yeah and we're gonna have uh dynamos right here on this area so we can add some scaffolding around like so go around here this all needs to go and get replaced with scaffolding anyway here you can see the empower underneath or the display stands at least so we can go like that and just connect this up uh, we're actually going to do this even though it's not going to be transferring anything i just like doing it because it looks nice all right so dynamos i have them in my bag i believe dynamo give me this guy this guy and this guy and we can add a couple more dynamos as well to here uh the one dynamo makes 600 rf per tick basically uh each and we can set up let's say nine of these in this area and then put them into a storage cell uh, the way i have had before so we're gonna put you here and we're gonna say a wire connector here and then we can do a coil here and oh, i need the thingy bob the relay oh last one perfect so we can connect that to here and then we can just go and connect it like that and that should start draining power from this okay uh do you have still anything inside of you you do not 
Uh, we need to get these guys empowered oil, and I don't know if three will be sufficient for what I'm trying to do. I think they will be for now. That's gonna be 12, 1800 RF per tick. I think that should be fine. Uh, so we need to just do this and do and disabled. We don't have empowered oil just yet. And to get the power into the empowerer downstairs, I think we're just gonna go like this. Uh, these guys need water as well. So we're gonna grab some water conduits, fluid conduits. We're gonna go here. I don't know if they can transfer power um, through any other side than just this coil up top because I made some enhanced energy conduits which we can uh, probably, I'll think I'll just put them, I'll use leadstone flux ducts because these do a thousand RF per tick which should be plenty for what these are doing uh, and I shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, and we're currently draining power quite fast because it's going everywhere. It's going here, it's going to the canola bits. Are you doing your thing? You are. And uh, I kind of changed a few of the drawers here. I have canola in and uh, seeds in here, and then I'm extracting just the seeds as well as the canola currently, but I wanna set up this guy to be a two by, uh, one by two drawer as well. Uh, so we can keep a stack of canola and a stack of seeds. That way we kind of have like a neat connection and we use up this. Uh, just as a drawer space. Uh, I currently have just the canola seed, but I want to replace that drawer so we can extract canola right out of here into the industrial squeezer. Because uh, right now, uh, we are an empty blacklist. You should be extracting canola as well. This is filtered and whitelisted for canola. Don't know why this isn't extracting. What if I whitelist canola and canola seeds? Are you like redstone? No, you're not. Random. Round robin. Don't know. Don't know why it's not extracting. I want it to go from the top, but that would look weird. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll get this sorted in a moment. It it should be fine. So basically, I'm saying basically again. We need power down there, and we could use a phantom energy face. Uh, I think that will work. Uh, whoop, 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 phantom energy face. There's this guy, which I can connect to the cell. I don't know what the range is. Works for CF, meaning you can connect it to things like generators and crushers. Yeah, yeah. So it basically transfers power. Uh, so I could connect it to this and then connect it downstairs, and that would get it power because running the wires downstairs would be slightly awkward and I don't know exactly how I would do it. Um, I think we're just gonna use that. The problem with the phantom face, it requires empowered Estonia, which is redstone bricks, nether bricks, and red dye, but I need to make another empowerer. A simple solution for power in the empowerer are specter coils. I just set one up on top of each one of them. I think I can put them possibly here to look better. Yeah, that's gonna be better, so it's not gonna obscure the item. Uh, but in the meantime, we can toss this on here. I think it's going to struggle and run out of power. But there we go. That should do the empowering. Is it doing enough? Hi. Is there, this is using like 100 RF for tech or something. Looks like it. So that is pretty cool. I could possibly just toss a spectre coil down there. I don't think I have any more. We have uh, some more of the uh, the things, the epic loot cases in the in the mob farm, I think, so we could get more spectre calls. Uh, but we have the empowered now, and I think I'll just want to go for, for safety. Uh, so we're gonna do a phantom face of this. Boom, boom. Let's go. Cave home. Lag a bit, like we do. We're back. We're back. Thank you very much. All right. So I need to go downstairs. My way is somewhere here. Just break that, there we go. So down here, I have two phantom faces. One, it's connected to the cano canola canola seed and the one to the crystallized canola seed. And I have power down here. So since we're never gonna really have to come down here, let's add this guy here. I could add it so it's like similar to the other two, but I think it should be fine. I just wanna see if there's this is enough range. Yep, it is. Okay, uh, we are actually gonna move it over here, I guess, if it works. So let's go, bam. Let's 
just to to be safe. Here we go. This should start empowering. I just didn't notice that this guy didn't have an insert on it and he didn't actually have canola and I accidentally right clicked a canola seed inside of it and it made an empowered seed. So it is working, right? Uh, I went to the empower at the base and tried it there and it worked. And I was like, why is it not working here? It's just a derpy derp. Okay, so the next thing that we need is to get the empowered canola seeds into somewhere where we can have um, possibly a drawer. We could put it right here, I think. Do I have any more drawers by accident? I mean, I have wood here, I can craft them up, no problem. Uh, so let's grab, uh, no, 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 that's much I think. And my crafting table, let's get a chest and that and that and that's not a chest, this is a chest drawer. Okay, so we're gonna toss you here and we can just extract with a phantom face. Do we want it here? I mean, it would be nice, but I need to hide the phantom face as well. Um, I don't know where I would put this because I can go here where we can actually hide the phantom face because we can put it like in the corner here and link it up to this empowerer and then extract it directly into the dropper. I think that will be better because then I don't really have to have a drawer anywhere and should be fine. So if we put the uh, an item conduit here and then we need a phantom face. I don't have, do I have any more here? I don't think so. I would need to go get one. So you get the idea, phantom face there, then the facade there, uh, and then we extract directly into the automatic precision dropper and we can drop it into the empowered thing and not have a problem with it. I think that'll be cool. Currently, I'm having a bit of a problem of extracting canola seeds into this drawer as well. So what I think we have to do is just do a phantom face and we can put it right underneath here. Uh, and then we will see the conduit because it's underneath. I, or if we do like basalt facade in the middle, how would that look? That, I mean, we need to place something underneath the stone as well. So we get rid of that stone texture. So we might as well put basalt, I guess. That could look cool. I wanted to put the different types of oils where we have the oil transfer so we can have like oils underneath there and we can still do basalt as well. Uh, it might become difficult in places where we have, um, when we have these machines and uh, da -da, scaffolding. Uh, and that might be a bit weird. So I don't know yet for the moment. You know what, we're gonna do a phantom face. We can change the facade or add a facade if we wanted to. Uh, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna connect you to here. And then we can just say extract always active, insert. So you'll be extracting what you need. And here we can say extract canola. I hope that'll work. But at least we're now getting canola seeds back into here. So it's empowering again. The empowerer is going directly into here. I remove the drawer because I've kind of like the way that this is empty and we not, not have a problem about that. Uh, I think this is fine if we have it here. I was thinking of putting this guy over here, but then that would complicate the whole transferring and I think it's fine. Everything facing outside. So this guy needs to be on not auto place. Right, and we need to wire it up. So let's just do that together because uh, I think it shouldn't take too long as I've already done it like two or three times or 60 bajillion times for that matter. Uh, so here we need the porcupine. And if we want to have oil underneath, we would need to put the redstone way, way, way below. Yeah, you know what? I think we're just going to go with basalt underneath like that. So we're just gonna put the whole porcupine thing uh, somewhere here. So let's check where we have the oil. So firstly, I'm gonna do that just so we can place the, the porcupine uh, down here. I have it in my bag, porcupine, and I need the two scanners, the pulse former, some redstone dust. And I think that's pretty much it. So the porcupine will go right here. 
and then we need you to go up let's go here just so we can see and one two three that needs to go one higher four and four okay then we do a scanner and a scanner whoops scanner and we scan you so it's crystallized oil here we're gonna take a pulse that guy already has the uh, empowered seeds and they're currently still processing so we can connect this to our, our dropper like that yep and then we need the other one to be right here on this scanner so you're gonna be connected to there do I want to do that because that's gonna yeah that's gonna deactivate it so that's fine oh no 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 stop like that now this guy has you have oil inside of you we can just remove it like that and like that okay so you don't have anything in here everything is fine these are doing its thing so we need the pulse former to drop one in there so we should now have empowered oil lovely we can set that to empowered oil and now we should have the thing collected nice awesome let's cover this up with some stone like so that's conduits everything is covered this needs to be here because of the room it is kind of cramped but it's all right so let's just add a torch so we don't get any bad guys spawn in here and let's just cover it up this way and then I need more stone like that some more scaffolding also let's just get these facades to be same MBT tag also these whoops because uh, they get a different MBT tag if you break them uh, or they get a different one if you break them so I'm trying to say so like that and then just did it I put a regular scaffolding right uh, we kind of see the wood that is underneath and everything is slightly wonky but here is where we have the empower anyway so I think it's fine I think we'll, we'll deal with it we're not gonna see it that much so we need this tank to be a beautiful tank one, two, three, four. Empowered oil. Empowered oil. Power. Uh, you guys need water. Uh, da, da. This. I have another sink somewhere. At least I thought I did. There it is. One, two, three, four. Oh, I already have the conduits. Um, let me just do this. Extract always active cover everything up and then scaffolding middle click on my mouse is a bit broken and doesn't work properly so that and that I think that's pretty much done uh, you still have some oh that's it extracted some crystallized oil so that's just gonna burn up and we're gonna get empowered oil in as soon as this guy is out uh, I think it went through the tank into here is where the crystallized oil went. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is doing its thing. Are you keeping up, though? I don't think so. <laughs> um, I think it shouldn't cause a problem because as soon as this guy is going to make a pulse and this guy is not going to have empowered seeds, uh, that might be a problem. <laughs> And if you hear squeaking, that's my chair, by the way, because uh, it's slightly squeaky. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on this, but I think we're not making empowered seeds uh, fast enough. So that might become problemo. Uh, let's do it like this. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is running as fast as it can, but I would need to slow this down somehow. And I don't know exactly how I would slow it down, but once this is filled, it shouldn't cause a problem. I might have to do tweaks to the redstone though. So let me just watch it and see what happens. I turned off blocks for the moment, just so you can hear me a bit 
better uh, while I'm talking. Uh, but I fixed up our problem here. As you can see, we have no items in here. And as soon as we get an empowered seed, it drops in and we make empowered oil. So what I did here is I replaced the pulse former for a sequencer, which is set up to have a sequence length of eight. It doesn't really matter how long it, re it really is. I, I think it could be one. Uh, and basically it's set to loop four. So it loops the cycle when it gets redstone signal and it restarts on no signal. So every time the oil is converted into empowered, this gets no signal, so it restarts the loop and basically is looping uh, the uh, dropper all the time that it doesn't have, uh, that it's receiving the redstone signal basically. So as soon as this guy gets a seed, it gets dropped and then the signal is reset or the sequencer is reset. So that is really cool. I can also set up this here because uh, we're kind of not making uh, crystallized seeds fast enough because we're doing one at a time. We could be dropping, let's say, a stack at a time, but we would need a different dropper, I think. Uh, but I think I, it's just nice if we remove this guy. I had a flint upgrade, uh, the storage downgrade, uh, and we're just going to make 2048 of the crystallized seed over time, and that should be enough to keep it backstocked for the uh, for the canola. Uh, or for the canola for the empower and also for uh, the crystallization of the oil up top. So let's just get out of here. And I think that should be everything done and complete, I think, hopefully. So we have this sorted. We can just uh, cover it up like that for the moment and do that because we're going to put basalt underneath here uh, and that should be fine, I think. You know what I can actually do? Uh, we can chisel in bits this and take the top plane off and replace it with basalt and then the sides can be replaced with oak and then we're pretty much never gonna notice. Because um, the scaffolding has like a, a lip on the edge. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out later, I guess. Uh, so we can kind of close this off and I think we can call it pretty much done. So we have empowered oil power. Uh, one thing that I want to actually show you is in a creative world, uh, I tested around which all of the oils and how it works with gelid cryothium and all that stuff, but we're currently, we're draining power. Oh yeah, because this is uh, still using the crystallized oil. Uh, will you not burn it all the way? Well, it will just break you and replace you uh, and then rotate you properly. So that, and then I need my, da, 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 this guy. There, there, and there. So now we have empowered oil. We're making a net gain of power, which is lovely. So this is gonna start draining a little bit, but uh, let me hop into that creative world and show you how the, all of the oils work and what actually is the difference with the dynamos. All of the dynamos make 600 RF per tick in different amounts per bucket, pretty much. So this one was using regular canola oil and with one bucket, it made around 80,000 RF. This one with one bucket of refined canola oil made 200,000. This one made 400,000. And this one made 700,000, all in uh, resonant compression dynamos with all of the upgrades, which we don't have right now, but we'll get there eventually. And this side is using gelid cryothium instead of water as the coolant. And this one made 100,000-ish, this one 270,000-ish, this one 550,000-ish, and this one 950,000-ish. So you get 150,000 more RF for gelid cryothium. Uh, we can also, uh, there is an augment uh, for these, I believe it's this guy, closed loop cooling, which makes it so that coolant is no longer consumed for an operation and some coolant must be present, and stronger coolants result in higher efficiency, which is uh, better. And I haven't tested out uh, that yet, but you lose some power because this makes 600 RF per tick, and that way it would make 480 RF per tick if we used one of the augments, but then we wouldn't have to make gelid cryothium. I think we would just have to fill this up with uh, four buckets or so, uh, and that would be fine. So eventually we'll see how many of these compression dynamos we need, how fast the oil is producing. But I think we're gonna have different types of power generation anyway. So we can use, let's say nine, nine dynamos in that little spot that we have in the base. 
and use that for power. But I think this is going to be it for today. We have lovely googly eyes. I am really hoping that you enjoyed today's episode. I had really a lot of fun setting up the whole Empowered Canola thing, and it was really cool. So if you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon if you want to play with me on the same server. And I will see you all in the next episode where we may tackle that. Okay, bye. Thank you.